Hey, ¿qué pasa, Calexico? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, like always, before we begin, I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank my anchor sponsors, Camilo, Jake, Dylan, uh, my friends at Dents on Border, uh, Sergio Tacos and Hot Dogs, uh, serving the Imperial San Diego and Yuma counties with Mexicali style tacos for the past eight years. Contact Sergio at 760 562 I also want to thank David Gastelum if you're thinking of buying or selling a home in the Imperial San Diego counties. Make sure you contact David. It's phone number 760-235-9576. Um, today, um, we have a really special guest. You know, he's a longtime friend that I've known since back in high school. Um, and he's been doing some really, really great things with, you know, uh, you can say local band because they're, you know, San Diego is like kind of like our neighbors. And, and, and you know, I know a lot of people from the Valley follow the, the band and, And especially they support uh, my guest today. My guest today is Victor Navarro, a.k.a. El Shamu. Hey, what up? <laughs> what up, Shamu? What up, <laughs> so um, before we get into, you know, you and Tribal Seeds and all this, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, growing up here in Calexico, you know, because um, I, like I said, I you know, me and you have, you know, kind of like a friendship from for a while back. Um, kind of knew you because of mutual friends and, and, and but you know just growing up in Calexico I know you grew up in in, in, in La Garra and, and and it's you know normally when you think of somebody that grew up in La Garra you think of um somebody that um maybe is like a like a gangster and not you know you you um I, from what i remember you you were like more into like punk music skateboarding and all this stuff like can you tell me a little about about growing up in Calexico oh man well what can i tell you um just the calexico life you know back what was it like 15 years ago you know we were there was a lot of um there's a lot of bands i remember from what i remember there's a lot of people getting into playing music um toquines, los toquines. a lot of kids were getting into um playing drums just experimenting with all that it was kind of i mean it wasn't new but it was you know new for us seeing like people play you know playing in a band and being like wow this guy's playing You know, they're all playing guitar, drums, and all that, and sounding good. Um, uh, I listen to a lot of music, you know. Music has always been uh, the direction that I've wanted to go. Uh, so so music was always, like, something that, like, it was in, in, your, in the back of your mind, like, you know what? Yeah, um, I did, I did a band when I was fourth grade. I did it for a little bit. I played the saxophone. I really wanted to play the trumpet, but... I think there was any more, there wasn't any more trumpets available, like, you know, at the school. So I had to settle for, for, for the saxophone and which that I did two years. Um, let's see. After that, I, I did guitar lessons, you know, when I was probably like 10 years old, there was like, uh, some, some guitar teacher doing classes, um, back then I got into it. My mom put me in guitar classes. They bought me a guitar. It was kind of new to me it was I, I caught on I wouldn't say super fast but it was like just mechanically I was I, I knew kind of like understood what was happening uh did you play band in, in high school no I didn't no. do band in high school I played in a I mean I played in bands mm -hmm. and that's when I kind of like started experimenting with like playing the bass the first thing I I did was play the bass when I was in high school we started playing uh We were like playing like metal back then. Oh really? I remember, I was like metal. Then we started getting into a little punk rock, and you know, just started meeting different people throughout that that played in different bands and stuff. Yeah, because I mean, I remember when when you know when I used to um, know you and hang out was uh, you know punk rock was like the thing you know Blink yeah. and and Sum 41 and all these bands that you know I think it was like um, 98 to like 2000 that I kind of like. 2001 where you know like we had that um friend you know friends in common that we would hang out like i remember like you guys were being into skating I, i i would i would have loved to know how to skate but i i sucked but i remember like hanging out and and i, I, too, man. I, I just all i knew is how to just go on it <laughs> how to go you know i followed all of them and and uh just kind of hung out you know I, i love skateboarding though just getting around on on it yeah especially because we were you know calexico so small Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's so small, but it's a small town, small enough to walk across, you know, or skateboard across, you know. So in the high school days, kind of that was like 
the means of transportation to get, because I lived on the other side of town. So we would have to, you know, I couldn't take the bus, unfortunately, because the route started a block after where I lived. So <laughs> I had to like skate walk, you know, I, whatever I could do, but it's mainly skateboarding. That's how I got into it and met a lot of my friends, you know, met, met you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you were talking about um Dufas, like Dufas back then was like anybody that skated in the valley, you know, knew knew Dufas. Yeah, no man, that's die hard skater right there. Yeah. And and um, you know, going back to the music, um, because I you know, I think before before you were a little bit more active on Instagram than you are now, right? You, like you took a little break from from Instagram. Yeah. I remember when I used to watch your stuff on Instagram, like it was crazy because you know, you know, you play for for this band, this reggae band, but you would also hear and listen to like corridos or or oldies or you know diff- all these types of music so like um like music in general is um um like i, I forgot the word but like i mean i mean, I-, I can tell like you love music because you listen to like all these types of music yeah for me music uh, just it doesn't have any boundaries you know it's, i'm not really tied into listening to one genre just whatever really you know, sparks my mind and I'm like, wow, that sounds good. I'll, you know, I'll listen to, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And, um, how did you, do you know, um, cause I, I know that, um, I was, li- I was listening to a podcast. Um, you guys, you did it with, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember the, the name of these, it was two guys that you were talking to on, on the podcast. Oh, with Mario. Yeah. And yeah. Mario Marin, yeah. And, um, you were talking about how you got into the band and, 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 and you, you mentioned that, you know, some of the guys know you, um is it because is it through tony and mark Munoz that you yeah actually how it all happened it was through actually it was through tony so like i have to you know say i give a lot of it a lot of credit to him for putting me in the uh or making the 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 lead i should say um he got me in they needed somebody to play bass at the time and i was you know available they hit me up and i just I was like, I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. Whatever they're like, we'll, we'll pay you. Or I'm like, I'll do it. Whatever, you, <laughs> you know, get me out there. That's so, mainly, I, I would credit, I would give credit to Tony, Tony. on that one. Are you, it's are the you, link because Tribal Seeds went and recorded in Calexico. The first album they did, well, uh, before I was in the band. And that's how I met them through Mark and George, like with Break From Society. Um, Mark used to have a little studio at his house and we somehow got linked through Tony actually also was the link between tribal seeds and like Brug from society and then recording the first album down there with Mark. Um, yeah, that was, the, that, that for me was the beginning uh, of the band. Of yeah. Cause I, I was looking, I was doing some research on like on the band um, and you know, I, I saw some old pictures and I saw, um, I knew Tony was in the band, um, but I didn't know Mark was there. It was Mark part of the band for for a couple of years i think he did like two years played in in the band played guitar in the band i i didn't because i i mean i i kind of know mark from you know from school and then um i remember for a while he was uh subbing at at De Anza when i used to work at De Anza. but yeah. i didn't like when i saw his picture i was like hey that's that's mark like i didn't know he was uh you know part of the band are you are you related to tony um actually um, we're not related <laughs> it's funny though when we were on tour people used to because we both had like similar features you know like just we had long big long dreads and like big thick beards and every time we were together everybody would ask us if we were like brothers or cousins <laughs> and for a while i don't know we were just like you know we we're just all drunk and we we're like yeah we're, we're we're actually brothers but it sucks <laughs> because a lot of people now ask me like you know Hey, where's your brother? And I feel like <laughs> kind of bad, you know, like giving them like the wrong information, you know, just misleading them a little bit. Yeah, because his last name is Navarro, también, you know? Navarro, yeah. Yeah. yeah so- we, I mean, Calexico, you know, it's 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 small, man. El, el, I always wondered. I'm like, man, I wonder if we're related somewhere along the line. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you've been with the band for how long now? It's I'm going on two thousand. 11 years now i joined Dang. 2010 wow that's crazy yeah. that's November crazy 2010 is the first time i went out that's a long time and um you know because obviously like when you're young and um 
growing up you you think like oh you know i'm, I'm gonna pro- probably someday leave calexico and travel here and there but what's like one of the craziest places that you've that you've traveled with the band that you're like shit i'm here with you know these guys and we're playing like that you can think of like probably i would say a good experience like that was for, we got to go to europe um 2009 stab out the whole year is like blend together i think it was 2019 i want to say yeah we went out to europe for the first time uh just we had i think five shows or six shows in five days so we were just going it, it was a learning experience for us it was kind of crazy we were you know on edge with each other like driving we, we split it into two vans the the transportation since we were only going to be there for not that long so we were basically just sleeping sitting down you know for overnight and we would play overnight and then we would have to drive or we would play drive overnight after the show and then check into a hotel sleep in for maybe three four hours go do sound check and you know it was it, we we never done it over there, you know, like that. It was really, really rushed, I think, for us. But we ended up doing pretty good, man. We were surprised to see how many people came out to actually watch us because it was only a show with no openers, basically. It was oh. just us. You know? oh. But did you guys have a chance to, you know, after all our shows, kind of like do a little bit of sightseeing and travel? Or? We did. We had, we had one. We had five. Okay, we had... Germany, Switzerland, London, and then France, we did a show. And the last show was in Am- Amsterdam, we had a show. But we were flying out of Amsterdam, so we got to have one day, like, of free, you know, to just roam around. That, that, was, that was a really cool place. Amsterdam. Just, like, all the bikes, dude, you know, like, just the culture, how it is over there. It's very different. Uh than america and culture you know like how people live their lives day to day and well it's, it's a different place you know but it was really 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 cool experience for me i feel Dude. like from from what i've seen from pictures from amsterdam i feel like they're really clean aren't they it yeah yeah there was really the thing that tripped me out dude there was like some some urinal like pee like shit like stalls where you could like take a piss like right in the middle like just in the middle of public so you just basically they can't see you taking a piss, or you, but they can see your back. Yeah, yeah. They you know what you're doing. Is <laughs> first time I saw that shit. It was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Well, I mean, it keeps it from people like peeing in the alleys like and stuff. Peeing, yeah, instead of peeing just in the corner, I guess <clears throat> go take a piss there. Yeah, I mean that, that's it nice. Is, I mean, in a sense, it is cleaner. It, you know, the streets would be cleaner in that aspect for sure. Yeah, and like it's I said, cool I was. Though. I was doing some research on you know the band and you know just reggae in, in, in general and, and you know reggae is. is even though um, people that aren't don't, aren't reggae fans, you know, don't really know how much how big reggae is all over the world. You know, I've seen the shows that you guys do, and it's like huge, it's huge. Big. Yeah, it, while going out there, just open our eyes to see how really how big it is. You know, these festivals that oh, in summertime it's when all the right, well all the music festivals you know like happen around summertime. Out there, there's a lot of a lot of uh, reggae festivals that go on. I actually brought back a book from one of the festivals that's like uh, it has all the summer festivals and they're all reggae, just a reggae. It's a thick book and they're in different parts of of Europe for for that. But it's huge, man. You'll hear reggae anywhere, you know, anywhere, just randomly, and where you ever leave, where you least expect it, you know, you'll yeah. And be, ha- have you had a chance to meet like? people that you listen to you know artists that you listen to have you had a chance to meet meet some of them you know with, yeah with yeah band? dude i had a like we i mean we grew up listening to like steel pulse kind of you know reggae and their band and we got to actually tour we did a summer tour with them we were together for a month and a week probably i think mm-hmm. that was a lot of fun i got to meet you know it was a cool experience meeting all all of them seeing how they you know, they've been playing for 35 plus years, you know, and it's it's cool to see how they play and how they're still playing and how they run their show and stuff. Uh, it's a good learning experience. 
And it's crazy because, I mean, you, you think about it and they've been playing for 30 some years and I'm sure they when they started playing, they were like maybe in their 20s. So now they're a little bit, you know, uh, you know, from what I've seen pictures of, of, of the band, the Tribal Seeds, you know, you guys are pretty much, you know, around the same age, you know, a little bit young, younger crowd. Um, and I bet like still, I mean, still Pulse is the band. Sh- I'm, I'm guessing the band members are kind of on the older side, right? Yeah, yeah. They're on their older side. It's cool to see how their older reggae fans, you know, um, take to our kind of style of, of playing because when uh, those kinds of reggae fans go to a show, they expect to see, you know, like reggae I would say in like the old style, you know, because there's not a lot of reggae that's been played in the old, like Bob Marley kind of style or like say Steel Pulse or like Gregory Isaac style. Everything now coming out of Jamaica is more like digital and like dance hall. So a lot of their, their the older people s- still like these, they're very strict with the music they listen to and mm-hmm. who they listen to. And to get a lot of love from people like that is, it's pretty cool, you know, to it, shows how much like your music travels and to other places and you know people that actually will support you and listen to you yeah do you still do you get any you know butterflies or like uh nervousness when you you know come out and and see all these people like yeah yeah that that never goes away and it'll happen for a little bit but once you start playing you know you forget forget about all that um i was was watching you know your guys's youtube channel and there's a there's a uh you guys did like a like a whole set but in, in one of the sets you know you you cover the um godwana song um is it guerra, guerra? yeah oh um yeah yeah guerra and yeah, i did that i don't know I don't, I don't even know how that came about i think just because um i well i mean i, I love godwana you know i've been got into him a, a while back I think it happened just through like singing, listening to the music like over and over. And one day uh, I was just singing the song and one of the bandmates came in and he's like, hey bro, you know what? We should we should cover that song. You know, we have a full band. We should try to see what, what we could do. And yeah, we just, we tried it out and actually came out pretty good. Yeah, it did. I was, I was listening to it and I was showing it to my wife. She's like, hey, he sings pretty good. Um, is it something that, you know, is that the first time you've, you've sang with the band or? I've sang before. I've done like <clears throat> I did another cover of Manu Chao. I did a Machine Gun. Um, I just don't come out and sing that much. But every now now there's like more of an opportunity to go out there because we have like sort of a bigger band because we got um, horn players now. So we're able to experiment with with stuff that we wouldn't be able normally without them. You know, other aspects that we throw in there. But it's pretty fun, man. It's that that song it has a lot of energy. It throws a lot of energy and like it's uh I don't know, just when we put it in there, it's it just changes the pace of, of our set. Mm-hmm. You know, just you gotta it's, it's we're we're like this and then you throw that song and it goes, Oh, you know, the energy of that song just skyrockets the set and brings that energy and you can tell people, you know, vibe. No, yeah, and, and when I was watching it, you know, I was watching the video and and I saw you like kind of like by me like singing and, and and like you know getting into the groove. I was like, man, this is, it, it you know it sounded really 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 good. And uh, I was like, I wonder if if he if that's something that he does often with the band or if it's you know or or every, he, now, and, every now and then we'll fit a song in there. Yeah, but do you, do you like do you like the part of you know the, being yeah. In the, yeah you like singing? Yeah, I like singing. It, it's cool. Uh, you know it's. That's what kind of gives me butterflies, not mostly the playing the bass because I'm behind, you know, not front, you know, and center. But when you're front and center, that's when I get the butterflies and that's when that comes in. You know, every time I do a new song that definitely I get nervous. Yeah. I try not to forget the, the, the lyrics and all that. Yeah, I bet. that. Yeah, that's the that's the hard like because I've done I've done um, stand up comedy a couple of times. Yeah. And like you're like front and center, and like like you, like I, I would practice my set, but once you get up there, like like set the oral tape, and like yeah, it's because everybody tantos I see, yeah, like all eyes on you, man. It's like you're running that show. No, the cool thing about stand up is like there's always like a light in front of you, so like it it blinds you, so like you can't really. It's really hard for you to focus. 
yeah focus on the crowd too yeah much. so that i mean that kind of helps but still like like you're like up there and 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 yeah it's it's it's, it's a trip i i i, I like doing stand up because of the, the thrill you get yeah but, but at the same time like when, when you bomb like it sucks because like you get immediate um reaction so like if if like you have this joke and you're like oh this joke's gonna you know pe people are gonna like it and you say it and nobody laughs you're like fuck bombs <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so so what have you and the band been doing since you know what is it february march that we've been in kind of like lockdown and what concerts are, are you know able to you know we've happen been trying to work well we mainly okay so we've been okay so this is what we did so since then we were we put out a a live performance we recorded a whole um live performance and put it out on youtube And then we we got that audio and we made we made an album out of it. Basically, we edited it, you know the mastered it and all. Um, we made an album. We put that out. We have a full length album that's in the works. It's been in the works for quite some time now. But you know we're very picky and we don't just want to put you know something out there. It's gonna be forever. So we we're taking our time on it um since since february you know everything's basically just lyrics been you know being written down it's all it's all a, a lead singer you know taking care of of all that and um just that process is long you know of, of writing music and and just putting stuff together because he 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 writes the music he mainly sets everything you know puts the melody he he takes a big part in writing the music and um let's see what else have we been doing i've been keep, i've been keeping busy just trying to learn um right now i'm trying to learn like illustrator and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know just to say stay busy I, i i'm into like you know art and i like graffiti and visual stuff you know mixed media and stuff like that so something i i've been personally keeping busy with yeah i know that you've been um kind of selling merch on your website yeah yeah i started doing i started doing caps and like designing patches and and, and that's the um i put out a hat yeah i put out a hat and some shirts on my website you know um, big ups to everybody you know big thank you for people supporting and buying my stuff it just came out of an idea just to put out just random stuff that you know that i'm into just that kind of inspired me, you know, to, to graffiti music, you know, um, just um, urban culture, you know. Mm -hmm. I just, so I'm mainly going to focus on making hats, uh, shirts. I'm going to be doing some pins, you know, little collectible stuff. And uh, that's it, man. It's just creativeness, you know. Right now is the time to do all that. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been kind of like, you know, this downtime in they're kind of like um exploring you know other um, ideas they've had that you know they they probably they probably couldn't do it because like for example you as a band you know and being in a band like you're always traveling and playing and all that stuff like so like it's kind of hard to sit down and you know draw draw stuff or, or put ideas to pen and paper and and right now it's a good, really good time to um i guess you know that's the the uh the silver lining of of us being in, in you know lockdown that you know we have a lot more time to get a little bit creative especially the creativeness that takes time to you know create and 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 put out there and, and yeah i get it yeah i've been putting together been, right now i'm working with um a tattoo artist that i know that uh did some work on me and uh he's from virginia so i i mainly want to work with artists and like kind of like show off what they could do you know other artists that i know that are friends of mine You know, so I'm gonna get him. He's I gave him like a concept. I told him like kind of like what I wanted in words. So he's gonna manifest it and draw it into a drawing that I'm gonna eventually put out on a shirt and make you know some stickers and some patches and stuff. Just, just I don't even know. I don't even know where the, where the idea. Just I just kind of like creating stuff. You know, putting it out there. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, I remember like when, you know, when you used to hang out as, as, you know, back when we were, I guess, kids, you know, 16, 17, like, I remember like you always had like this, this uh, cool fashion, like your fashion sense was like, you know, I was like, hey, 
for some people might seem like my like a little bit weird but I, to me it's like hey sh- you know whatever shamu's like wearing like looks pretty pretty dope <laughs> do you remember the fucking the hair wait? remember the hair dude fucking <laughs> i i can't even believe i did that like my hair was green it looked like a broccoli at yeah. some point. like i don't know i just you know we were kids i didn't i didn't like, I, I remember you would most of the time like like stuff that i remember from you like wearing was like shorts and like really like colorful socks Socks, bro. That rent is the dicky shorts, bro. I've always mm-hmm. liked dicky shorts, man. I don't know why. It's, it's, they feel good, you know. When you put them on, just you can do anything in them. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you ever, you know, see people from you know, Calexico or like people that that reach out to you that you're like, oh, what do you do? What do you do now? I'm like, oh, I play in, the, in a band. And are they ever like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like you play in the band. Yeah, yeah, dude. For, I mean, I. It's cool to see it and and then just. Uh, on the road, I re- I connect with a lot of people from Calexico that are living out, you know, that I went to high school with that are living out in like New York or in like, you know, Texas and and and, and different places. And it's cool to, you know, we'll re- we'll, you know, connect and go out and have lunch and, you know, I'll invite them to the show and, you know, fucking hang out and reminisce and think about how weird it is to be chilling on another side of the U.S., you know coming from Calexico and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and because, and, and I mean, like I said, like, uh, Tribal Seeds has, has been, you know, banned for a long time now. And I remember, like, since probably before high school, like, I would, or even, or, like, during high school, like, I remember, like, people talking about them. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they have a lot of followers from Calexico, the Valley, just because, you know, they're from San Diego. Some of the band members were from Calexico. So, I mean, I'm sure there's Calexico people all over in the United States that, have been fans since you know a while back so yeah i could see how you know you would um you're able to meet people from Calexico that are, are fans from you know from a while back go around yeah everywhere man you'd be you'd be surprised you know <laughs> man you know i saw you in, at an airport <laughs> and no shit I, yeah you were the second person that that i've seen at an airport the first person i saw at an airport it was in uh in texas and uh of this dude Alonso, he he's he's like my, he's my half cousin, and uh, I saw him just randomly too. We were just walking, and it, it was from Houston, and that fool taps me on the shoulder. He's like, "Hey, Shamu," and I'm like, "What the?" You know, when they say that name, I'm like, Ooh. "You know, somebody from Calexico that knows me." Yeah, yeah, because uh, we're talking before we started recording. We're talking that you know the last time me and me I, I saw Shamu was um <clears throat> I was going to Guadalajara with some friends. And we had a layover in Mexico and, you know, I was walking off my, my plane and just walking through this airport and I see this guy I was like, what the heck, this guy's here. Like, I haven't seen him in years and I get, I, you know, ran, ran into him here in, in the, in the freaking airport. It's, it was super airport, weird. It's all random. <laughs> I know it's super weird, but yeah, it's crazy. Cause you know, I've, I've known that you, you know, you are p- part of the band and stuff, but you know, I was like, why would I meet you here and see you here in, in, in this random airport? At a random time, you know? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It was I think it was I want to say like it was um almost a year because we went it was February you no know, it was around see because we went for we went for the long weekend it was we had a Monday off so we went for yeah so it's gonna be like three years maybe or two years now yeah like two years yeah that's crazy yeah because it was a year yeah it was 2019 yeah that's great 2019 <laughs> man that's, that's especially now yeah yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, we were talking about <clears throat> you guys are gonna have a kind of like a drive-in concert. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, that's gonna be happening in Orange County. I'm not exactly sure of the venue. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know we're playing two days, Friday and Saturday. Uh, Saturday's completely sold out, <clears throat> which uh, it's pretty cool, you know, to know that the show sold out and. You know, people are still willing to go out and enjoy music. You know, if it's if music heals, heals the people. You know, heals a lot of, a lot of wounds. So we 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 all need that now. And uh, let me see what else can I say. That that place is one of the only places in Southern California, I think, that has an actual sound system. Oh, okay. So you actually hear loud music because most of them, I think, most of the venues have. You, you sit and it's like a drive and like you listen to the music coming out of your car so you have like a crappy sound system in your car you know yeah. you're not gonna get to enjoy it fully 
but that that's something about that place that's pretty cool that i've i've heard i haven't played there yet but we'll see we'll see how it goes so i pulled up um tribalseeds.net um if you guys want to you know learn about you know their upcoming concerts so this one's february 12 and 13 it's a, a city national grove in anaheim like Jamu nice. said the the saturday the 13th is already sold out but there's still tickets for the the 12th but yeah um yeah it's in anaheim um city national grove let's see Grove. Yeah, I've been there. I don't know. If I'm, I might have played there once a while back, but I'm not exactly sure. Driving in OC, City National Grove. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I, like, do you do you see that? Um, like a lot of more more of your concerts, like right now, you know, being this way, or like you guys get to play like in drive-in theaters and stuff like that. It, it's i mean it's cool it's the only thing we can do right now as of right now and still entertain people you know and pull them out of whatever whatever funk or whatever you know they might be having going on and just go out and have a little fun you know forget about all this this last year you know <laughs> it's cool that we're doing it at the beginning of the year and i think it's the first show that they're of this year that they're doing at, so, at that national yeah at that venue yeah so we got to got to do that hopefully yeah. we got to do a lot more of those and if there's nothing else to do then that's that's the way right now the only way to actually keep doing this because uh i don't see it happening like in venues and stuff like that anytime soon you know we're still kind of going through all this covid so yeah until that gets taken care of and you know it's gonna go to sports and when sports you know get get going pretty good then the entertainment music and all that i think it's will be the next step after that mm -hmm. yeah i was watching the um when i was you know doing research i was watching like concerts and stuff like that on youtube and you know it's, it's kind of like weird like you see you know videos that are like 2019 2018 and you're just like oh shit they're so close you know <laughs> there's a so lock on your face and like everybody's all sweat dude it's crazy to, to see to see that now you know yeah it, it, like, it, like it, you cringe yeah you're like oh shit like they're gonna <laughs> they just, they just punch it, you know but yeah, yeah i mean yeah and, and like you said like right now the, you know this is the only thing you can do and 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 you know it's sometimes like you need it like you just need to go out and and even if it's listening to a band from your car you know you know it, 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 it distracts you from you know it's all this yeah, yeah. Especially a lot of people are having a hard time, you yeah. know, this last year. Uh, it's just music, you know, will we'll, we'll bring people together and just erase that for a little bit, you know, put you in a, a little trance, you know, with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, 2021 hasn't, you know, been all that good either. Even though we're only like 19 days in, it's been super crazy. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I hope that, you know, you guys can do more of these. It's crazy that, you know, we have a, a lot of people during the pandemic were trying to get the drive-in theater here in, in the Valley to reopen. But I mean, it's it's trash now. Like it's Oh, like, yeah, they don't even have speakers anywhere. That's not a lot of thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm sure that you, they could probably bring in some kind of sound system and maybe hold, you know, concerts in there too as oh, well. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Utilize that big space. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, like especially for you know people bring, coming in in their cars and you know chilling, maybe like reserve a couple of areas per car and and have them chill there. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we just need to adapt to this for uh, hopefully it's not too too much longer. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to <laughs> I was talking to there's a, a local band here in Calexico called um, Sweet Sweet Orange. Yeah, I talked to them on what was it? Oh, on Sunday. On Sunday, and yeah, I mean they 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 took the the time, this time off to record an album, um and and yeah, like just writing, you know, they're trying to you know take advantage of this downtime so they can they can write, and it's pretty cool because you know the band. I don't know, have you heard of them? Yeah, actually, I heard of them. I think they're podcasts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they it's pretty cool because they remind me of like you know Blink or Sum Forty One, like that type of music. It's pretty. Yeah. I, I really like their music. It's really, they're really cool guys. Especially like when we're talking, like I was talking to them and it kind of reminds me of, 
you know, hanging out with, you know, with all you guys like Panchito, Chamo, El, el Dufas, El Jake, El, Jake. el Edward. Those, <laughs> so, like, it took me, like, whenever I talk to them, like, it kind of takes me back to those times when we were, like, freaking hanging out. Yeah, yeah. And um, but yeah, like like and like I was saying, like they took that time to and like just like you guys, you know, like you you said, like you know, you guys are taking time to you know write and 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 you guys even produce an album during that time off and and just trying to to freaking adjust to this freaking crazy. Yeah, night. we're all trying to you know see what we can do just just to keep it active, you know, and keep keep just to keep relevant, you know, keep relevant and and. Uh, we want to keep relevant you know we don't want to not do something you know we want to keep 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 progressing and keep putting stuff out so. yeah and especially like for you know I, I know like the restaurant business took a big hit um movie industry the music industry because you know the the big part of you know being in that business is you know having people together and and you know whether it's listening to music you know jamming or whatever to, together but but i mean it's the hardest for especially i mean you think about the bands but you know people don't often think about everybody else you know the people that set up the, the sound systems so, yeah no it's it's a that, that got me this year got me into thinking of all that you know it's because i mean i the people that set up all the stuff the people that do the lights there's not just the venue you know there's people security people that have been working at music venues for, you know, the last 10 years, you know, uh, um, the riggers are the guys that, you know, rig up all the lights up on the trusses and stuff. They're not working, you know, there's no work in any of that right now. So the, it's not just the musicians there's, there's a lot, a, a lot of people behind the scenes that mm -hmm. get, get that ball rolling, you know, get that actual show to, to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, as a band, like, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure you can, you guys can figure out ways to kind of, um, get a little income coming in but i mean those people that you know that are like the hard labor like people that are doing all this stuff like you said the people that work the the concession stands the people that work in the parking lots you know all these people are like left out yeah yeah man it's like it's so funny not too long ago i i i was doing a, you know i was doing little side jobs and uh i was working at this um embroidery shop you know um for, you know embroidering shirts and sweaters and stuff like that And I, I sent a picture to one of my friends. I'm like, oh, dude, check it out. Well, he's a musician too. And then he's actually from, he's from Hopeville. He plays the bass. His name's Omar. Um, then he sends me a picture back and it's him like driving a forklift, you know, like <laughs> at the same time, you know, that we're both, he's like, man, dude, times are tough, man. You know, you got to adapt and, and see what you got to do, you know, to, 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 to make some money, you know, if, you know, we, we depend on music to, to to live you know and and and, and uh, just right now it's we got to find different avenues you know to be creative with with how because me personally I, I love playing music because it gives me a way you know to travel with along with playing you know so it's like a, I go play somewhere and you play and it's a vacation and you know you make a little bit of money while you're out there and stuff and that's what that's what I miss man that's what that's what I miss the most is the traveling and I didn't take it for granted ever but I right now I sure miss it man you know being just the uh, being able to go somewhere that you wouldn't normally if it wasn't for the band you know I wouldn't be able to travel anywhere I would just you know be around the United States probably, you know, traveling maybe here, here and there, but the band kind of like, you know, I got a lot of respect for, for everybody that does this, this kind of work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what I was, I was trying to the other guys as well. I was like, um, especially for them that are kind of young and, and, you know, they're doing this on, you know, on their own, you know, just like, I was like, I bet you guys, you know, even though you hated the travel, like, I, I bet you guys m miss it now, you know, just hanging out and driving those four hours to L.A. or, or yeah. San Diego. And Dude, those are fun times, you know, like, tra especially the travel, because, you know, you're traveling with your bandmates that are also your friends, you know, so you guys create good, cool memories. And, 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 and you know, that's something to never take advantage or or take for granted of, you know, it's it's a time to enjoy 
Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, um, is there anything, you know, any closing thoughts, anything that you would like to, you know, tell us, talk about? Um, just, uh, I mean, not, I mean, okay, so closing thoughts. I want to thank you, you know, thank you for having me on the show. It's been years of, you know, knowing you, man. It's time flies and uh, it's cool that you're doing this, you know um especially for you know our people in calexico and you know something something cool and different you know to bring to bring you know and i've seen seen your podcast you know you bring a lot of cool information you know that normally people in calexico maybe wouldn't even care to even like listen you know or you know um how could i say it like pay attention to or be in there you know yeah. it's cool that you you do that you bring all these people to you know express themselves and and tell them what they're about you know it's cool uh, congratulations what is this uh episode one i think it's 20, 120 one let me see let me Something like that it's episode oh come on 121 121 man congratulations on that thank you thank you yeah it's been a, it's been a long time yeah it's dedication, man, you know, to do some, to do stuff like this, you know, and stay dedicated and, and, and keep doing it. And, yeah. you know, hopefully we'll, we'll see you, we'll see you next year for, I don't know, episode almost 200 or something, you yeah. know? We'll see. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know what, um, you, we've been before this, when we actually, when we saw you in, in Guadalajara, you know, we had me and, and my friends, Jackie and Alex had, because they know your sister and they're like oh you know yeah the last time you know they were here in, in san diego she invited us and she was gonna get us tickets and go backstage blah, blah. so it's like yeah next time you're here like next time they're here like we should plan something out so yeah for sure once once everything you know gets back to everything settles down man you know we'll, we'll when we have a san diego show I'll, I'll let you know and you know we could come and check it out maybe do a podcast then yeah yeah for sure it would be, be great to you know talk to you and maybe some of the other bandmates and yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so, you know, I want to thank you again for, for taking this time. Um, I really, um, to me, like, like every time I see you, like, uh, I don't know, it takes me back to like when we were kids and we were messing around. I, I don't know if, were you there when we were trying to get everybody, we were at, at um, Dufus's house and he had like this really small car in front of his house. And we were like, oh, everybody, let's get in the car. Oh, and they got like 13 people in the, <laughs> yeah. you know what it was? I think it was like a. It was like a geo prism. We don't carito yet. Yeah. I remember that. No, and then everybody was in there, and then Dufus's parents would drive up. <laughs> it was like, oh shit, get up! And I think his mom was pissed. Oh wow, oh, yeah, she was. <laughs> he sees. It's funny because it's like she sees three people get out, and then she's like still yelling at him, and then there's four people, five. I think there was like ten people in that car. Yeah, right? we 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 fit a lot of people in there, but yeah, like it takes me back <laughs> to like those times when you know because. I'm I'm a little bit older than you guys. I think um I'm gonna be 39 in March. Um I don't know uh, how old you're like two three years old. I'm gonna be 37. 37. So like a couple years. I was a couple years older than you guys. And and but like since Jake Jake you know he's my like my little brother my best friend. You know I would hang out with him and he, would, he you know he would hang out with you guys. So like uh, I would you know got to meet you guys and hang out. Um, but yeah, like something that I always remember is like, you know, you guys would do like the randomest shit and, and it was, it was super fun. Um, like, like I didn't even know that we had hot springs here by Hopeville and like we would go to the hot springs and, and chill and, you know, you yeah, know, hang out with it. We did the most random things, man. Yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. A lot of fun. And, 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 and at the end of the day, like it was random, but it wasn't like, um, you know, we weren't hurting people. Like it was just like. Nah. Like fun never, shit. Nothing, never did anything like that, but yeah. we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So like, yeah, when like whenever like I remember whenever I would see you, like you know, I was like, oh yeah, you know, Chamo's here. Like you know, I would always have fun with you and and everybody else. But yeah, like I, I'm 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 glad that you're you know doing doing good. I mean, maybe not right now as as good as you know we 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 can, but um you know I, I'm glad that you're still with the band. Um, and I see that you guys are really successful, you know, I see all these people, you know, you know, at your concerts and stuff like that. So it, it makes me happy that, that, you know, the band is good, you're good. Um, and yeah, like nothing but, but luck and, and success to you and, and, and the band. 
Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. And, you know, whenever you want, you know, I could see you. Maybe I could get you somebody else to to do a little podcast, you know. Maybe I'll get you some band members. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Get us. Yeah, yeah. All and right. Saludos a todos, you know, in Calexico. You know, all my people out there, all my friends, family, everyone out there, you know, nothing but love and respect to, you know, our Calexico, man, you know, yep. our hometown. Calexia. Calexia. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right shamu we'll, we'll thank you again for for taking this time um thank you guys for listening um remember to stay safe wear your face mask social distance wash your hands yep yeah. and um yeah we'll see you guys in the next one peace all right